Hi there, my name is Ziming, and I am an oboist at Wilfrid Laurier University in Canada. I make reeds and I sell them commercially, I supply high school with them. I used to work at Gary Armstrong Woodwinds, so I think I know a decent amount about gouging machines and reed making in general. I've owned one of Greg's gouging machines for just over a year now, and I'd like to give you my thoughts and opinions on the oboe gouging machine made by Greg James at Precision Music Products Canada. One thing that I've noticed with most gougers on the market is that they all sort of seem to be the same. They're all based on the old school graph machine except they're not made poorly. They all have spring-loaded uh, clips at the, at the end of the gouging bed to hold the cane down. They all have little cane guards to prevent the cane from sliding off. They all use a cane guide to push the cane down onto the gouging bed. Um, and to me that seems a little a little bit primitive. And the way that uh, gougers seem to be marketed nowadays, they're sort of... I feel like there's a lack of innovation. I'm seeing a lot of gougers marketed as uh, ma being made to better tolerances, being made more precisely, or this this gouger has um, a different size gouging bed so that it can push down, so that the cane guide can push down on it better. Uh, this gou this gouger was designed with this oboist, but it really doesn't seem to have any innovation involved. Here we're going to do a quick overview of the designs of different types of gouging machines. In the bottom left corner we have Greg's oboe gouger with the side clamps and uh, the other three machines are just standard gougers that we have floating around the reed room here at Laurier. They're all very good gougers and they're being used and all work very well to make great reeds, but I find that uh, Greg's design is the only one that seems to stand out. Other gougers, to me, seem to be just improvements upon uh, the machining and ideas used in the original graph gouger. For example, here, uh, they all have these little clip clips that uh, keep the cane on the gouging bed. They have the little uh, cane guard here that'll reject cane, reject cane that's too warped or the of uh, too large a diameter and you have the gouger carriage that goes on a rod itself as opposed to Greg's gouger where the carriage is attached to the rod and the rod rolls between bear on bearings on the two posts which in my opinion is a better design because there has to be some play to allow the carriage to actually move, otherwise it would just get stuck, right? And if there is the same amount of play between the, this kind of design and this kind of design, there will be a lot less wobble on the carriage itself when you compare the two, because it's sort of like holding a pen in the middle and trying to wobble, wiggle it, having someone wiggle around as opposed to holding it at two points like that, it's a lot more stable, right? Another problem that you have with uh, standard graph gougers, or well, graph design gougers, is that as you're gouging, the cane will sort of slowly move to the side, and that will definitely affect consistency. Whereas with Greg's machine, you don't need the little two clips or a cane guard at the edge and you don't have to worry about the cane moving to the side because with the clamp system it's self-centering and it locks the cane in place so that you can't move it any anyway and you also won't have cane flying out and messing stuff up all adjustments for this gouger are made by moving the gouging bed itself side to side and up and down as opposed to moving the carriage up and down and the bed side to side on most other gougers which uh, this gouger has the same concept. It moves just the bed itself as opposed to the to the roller carriage. Whereas these two gougers, side to side adjustments are made by moving the bed itself, 
but height adjustments are made by moving the car by moving the height of the carriage using this little thing here and on this gouger same concept like this on the original graph gouger you sort of have this sort of thing where you slide this uh, bar of metal side to side and that will change the height but the reason I don't like that design is because when you move the height of the roller it changes the angle at which the blade is gouging so I know this is exaggerated but you're sort of if you raise it you're sort of gouging at this angle and if you lower it you're gonna gouge at a different angle and that'll affect the results that you get another nifty little thing that we have on this gouging machine is you can see little markings here and that'll tell you by how much you're actually moving the gouger bed and each I can't I don't know if you can see the little notches but each big notch is uh, five hundredths of a millimeter and each little notch is just one hundredth of a millimeter and you have that for both side to side and up and down adjustments another nifty thing about that I like about Greg's gouger is that you actually have something to hold on to the gouger carriage with as opposed to other designs where you sort of just you know put uh, the screw onto your palm and just go for it right that can get a little uncomfortable and well I've got some calluses on my hands from using those gougers but that that's a small that's a small complaint I guess another nifty thing about Greg's gouger that you can't really do with other gougers well probably because other gougers don't look as big is you can sort of uh, I guess you could say you could field strip it for transport you can screw this off, take, unscrew this take this pin out you can take that out and it just makes it a lot easier to pack up and transport another thing I really like about Greg's gouger is that it comes with a transport brace which you can see right here one part screws into the gouger base and another part screws into the gouger carriage itself what it does is it props the gouger carriage up and stabilizes it so that uh, the blade is not touching the gouging bed and it's also not flailing around so that you don't have to duct tape uh, the carriage down to the bed itself with a piece of cotton here to protect the blade it's also very very sturdy as you can see I can uh, pick up the gouger just by the carriage itself and not have to worry about anything it's solid Now, as much as I love this gouging machine, it is not a perfect machine. This is actually the um, in the first batch, the first production model of Greg's gouging machine. You may have seen the other video of uh, the prototype. You can see here, I guess you can't really see here. Now you can see it. The serial number is 02, so this is the second one ever produced. Um, and again, it is not perfect, but the little flaws in it that I found after having this after using this gouger for over a year now and gouging at least a thousand pieces of cane because I need to make reads for myself and I also sell my reads commercially and to a high school I found that this little screw here that pushes the blade down will occasionally get loose not very much and the fix really is just taking a screwdriver to it, tightening it, and then just readjusting everything to make sure that it's gouging at the right depth. It's not a huge issue, it only happens every couple hundred pieces of cane. It's not a huge issue, and you can easily just solve it by using some thread locker the next time you do I well the next time you do that. Another problem which you really have to watch out for if you're using this gouging machine is that you cannot hold the gouger by the end bell if you are if you're working at it because if you pull on it then what will happen is you'll unlock the clamp and for one thing you'll re one thing you'll release the cane the other problem is if the clamp is unlocked and the gouger is down the blade will actually co make contact with the side clamp itself 
so you have to watch out for that. He doesn't sell you his gouge or anything like that. He, he basically has this design concept, which is that you can clamp the cane down to the bed and be consistent every single time. I've had this gouger for over a year, and it I haven't even changed the blade. I've gouged that at least a thousand pieces of cane on it, and it's still consistent. I st it still makes great reads. I, in my opinion, it's just designed a lot better than other gougers on the market. Another thing is that if you like a specific gouge that you're getting on another gouger, but you just want the same gouge, um, and you want the gouge more consistently, what you can do is you can send Greg a piece of cane, and he will actually take measurements of the piece of cane. Every half a millimeter, starting from the center of the piece of cane, he will take a measurement of the thickness, and he can make a blade for the gouger and give you the exact same gouge.